with the pie, and I'm just worried about that piece, now do this. Makes it easier. Four pi of five. I'm going to have four to the five halves minus one to the five halves. No, no fraction. That, that makes it nice when you do this. Now, four to the five halves, I know how to do this pretty quick in my head. I take a square root of four, and then I take the fifth power, that's 32. I take one to the five halves, anything to one to anything is one. So this is 31. Hopefully I did that correctly. Right. Square root of four is two, two to the fifth is 32. So you're going to have four fifths, four fifths pi times 30, what did I say? Plus 31 times 4, 124. Your volume is 124 pi over 5 without having to do shell, uh, washers or discs, shells. Well, we're continuing talking about how to do some volumes. Now, we, of course, we've covered some disc method and washer method. We're just getting into the cylindrical shells method, which is the idea of, I think I mentioned the cake and the coffee can, right? Cutting slices of cake out and finding the volume of each cylinder. And then we're adding up all those cylinders. So it was different than shells and washers because, I'm sorry, discs and washers, because with discs and washers, <coughs> whatever axis you're revolving around, that's what the, the functions need to be in terms of. So around the x-axis, in terms of x. Around the y-axis, in terms of y. The cylindrical shells method kind of flips that. It says if we're going around the y-axis, that's when you want it in terms of x. If you're going around the x-axis, that's when you want it in terms of y. Are you following me on that? It's, it's, it's backwards, almost like it's backwards, so that gets confusing for a lot of people. So let me ask you this. In this question, if we're going to revolve some region around the y-axis, are these formulas good the way they are, or do we need to change those functions? What do you think? If we're going around the y-axis, it should be in terms of, you need to understand what in terms of x means. Is this in terms of x? Mm -hmm. This one's good either way, by the way, if you notice that. That's, mm -hmm. that's fine. Uh, is this one in terms of x? Yes, this is in terms of x. Get it in your head that in terms of x means the terms should be x terms, yeah. Or solved for y. So around the y, for cylindrical shells, solved for y. Or in terms of x, those mean the same thing. They have to mean the same thing to you. So again, I ask this question, if we're going around the y-axis, which we are here, is this okay? Yeah. Yes. Good. Now, we remember that our formula for the volume was... What did I give you? 2 pi x f of x dx? Only here, well, we got two functions. So we're going to do something very similar to find the area between two curves. Remember finding the area between two curves, how you took the top curve minus the bottom curve? We can do the same thing here. Same exact thing. We'll take the top volume minus the bottom volume. Basically, the top function will sweep out a bigger volume. The bottom function will sweep out a smaller volume. If we subtract those two volumes, what it will give us is basically the volume between the top function and the x-axis minus the bottom function and the x-axis, and that will give us the remaining volume between our two functions. So it will look very, very similar to area between two curves. For us, though, that means, well, firstly, how do I find A and B? And secondly, how do I figure out which one is on top? How would I find A and B in this case? What do you think? Okay, let's do that. Let's do x equals x squared. We can solve it. And what we find is that x equals 0 or x equals 1. You okay with the 0 or 1? Yay, no, folks. You okay with it? Yeah. So we just found our bounds of integration. That's kind of nice. We already have that set up. So we're going from 0 to 1. Very good. Does the 2 pi ever change for us? So we're going to get a 2 pi. Does the x ever change for us? The x. This x. The x can be there no matter what. It's always going to be there. Unless it's a y, unless we're going around the x-axis, and then that's a a y variable. You follow me? So the x is going to be there. What we care about finding is the f of x in this case. Now, be careful, but set it up just like you would the area between two curves. So we're going to find the function on the top, the function on the bottom, and subtract them. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Can you find the function on the top? Yeah. Oh, I hope so. How would you do it? Cool, so we got from 0 to 1, plug in 1 half. If I plug in 1 half to x, I get 1 half. 
If I plug in 1 half to x squared, I get 1 fourth. That tells you x is on the top and x squared is on the bottom. Raise your hand if you feel okay with that so far. Cool. So when we plug this stuff in, we go, all right, well, f of x, it's not just one function anymore. It's the top one minus the bottom one. When you think about that, I hope it makes sense to you. Just, just think for a second. Think. If I distributed this and I broke those integrals up, what it would have is the volume underneath this minus the volume underneath this. Or in other words, the volume of the top one revolved around the y minus the volume of the bottom one revolved around the y. That gives us the remaining volume. You got it? Same, it's a very similar idea to area between two curves. Now let's go ahead and work on how to do that integral. What's the first thing you would do? Go for it. Oh, I, yeah, I'd probably pull out 2 pi as well. So from 0 to 1, what else are you going to do? Distribute. Definitely distribute. Don't try a substitution if you can do it easier than that. So most of these aren't substitutions. Most of them are pretty basic. Just a little manipulation. x squared minus x cubed dx. That means we're going to get 2 pi. I'll do it as x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4. And we're going from 0 to 1. So that gives you 2 pi. If we plug in the 1, you're going to get 1 third minus 1 fourth. I'm going to test the 0 just to make sure I don't miss anything, but we're going to get 0 in this case. But you want to have it in mind. That way, in case you had like a minus 1 up here, x minus 1 cubed, you wouldn't miss that fraction. So that is going to be a 0. So basically, we have 2 pi times. If you do that fraction, I believe you get, oh, what is that? How much? You said 1 12? 1 12. So we're going to get how much? 5 over 6. 5 over 6. Now, of course, I'm going through this a little bit quickly because you know how to do the integrals. You know how to plug the numbers in. Do you feel okay with our example? You guys over here, yeah? Are you awake today? So we're going to get the picture of Mondays. Last week of school on Monday. I know it, right? I know it. So notice that even though we went around the y-axis, we did change our variables. We had it in terms of x. This means in terms of x. So for the cylindrical shell method, around y, dx, not dy. It's got to be in terms of x on that one. Let's go ahead and try one where we're going around the x-axis, just so you can see it one time. Uh, I'll talk about one more. We'll set it up, but we won't do it, and that'll be the end of this particular lesson. So we want to find the volume bound by volume bound by x equals negative, what note the negative, x equals negative y squared plus 6y and x equals 0 around the x-axis. In our case for cylindrical shells, since we're practicing that right now, cylindrical shells looks like this. Oh wait, hang on. We're not going around the y-axis anymore. We're going around the x-axis. If we're going around the x-axis for cylindrical shells method, our function should be in terms of what? Y. Okay, are they in terms of y? Yes. Y's and y's. Yeah, that's great. In terms of y means solved for x. So for cylindrical, sh for cylindrical shells around the x, solved for x. Or in terms of y. So for cylindrical shells, you go from c to d, 2 pi. Am I going to have an x here right now? No. What am I going to have? Okay, so make sure you make that change. We'll call it g of y dy. What's x equals 0? This way. That's actually the y-axis. What that means is that we have a vertical line, the y-axis. That's no problem. We're going to be taking, just taking this function in terms of y and going this way with it. Now, since those are our two functions, but the second function is kind of nice. It's just a zero. How can we find our c and our d here? What would you do? 
Is it equal to what? Zero. Yeah, here we set the two functions equal to each other, right? That was, that was not a problem. Well, here, look at it. You can still do the same exact thing. You have x equals 0 and x equals negative y squared plus 6y. So let's just set those things equal to each other from here. Oh, how are you going to solve it? I would do the same thing. Factor a negative y out. You're going to get... Yeah. <coughs> Now, by rights, you should determine which function is on the top, the y equals zero on the right, the y equals zero, or the I'm sorry, the x equals zero, or the x equals negative y squared plus six y. So, plug a number in there just to make sure, because you notice if you did it backwards, you're going to get a negative volume, right? If you do that, can you ever have a negative volume? So, some of you on your homework who are giving me negative volumes, you're doing it wrong. You can't get a negative volume. It's not going to happen. So, I'm going to take like a, a one. Just plug in one. If you plug in 1 here, you still get 0. If you plug in 1 here, you're going to get 5. So that means that this function is on the, in this case, on the right, or on the, on the top. But for, for y functions, we get on the right. So let's go ahead and try to set up our integral. Uh, can you tell me where we start and where we stop? If you want to see this again, it'd go from 0 to 6. You'd plug in the number 1. If you plug in 1, that's still 0. x equals 0. If you plug in 1 here, you get 5. So that's negative y squared plus 6y. That's on the top. I heard some of you say from 0 to 6, you're absolutely right. What's going to come first again? Tell, help, me, help me out with that. Yeah, you know what? Don't forget the 2 pi. Some, I was doing this problem quickly earlier, and I forgot the 2 pi. I'm like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a pi in there because we're circular. So I forgot all about it. So don't forget the 2 pi. That would make a big difference. 2 pi, and then what else? Good, so this first part does not change. What does change is the g of y, depending on what we have first and second. Uh, what, what are we going to put for our g of y? Can you help me out with that? Good. Do I have to subtract off another function here? It would be zero. I'm not going to show the zero, but if you had a different function right now, you'd subtract off the second function. In this case, the zero would be on the bottom. Now, I forgot something kind of crucial. What am I forgetting here? Yeah, that's, that's huge. Okay, well, walk me through it again. What are you going to do? Factor into 2 pi. Sure. Distribute. Well, we're pretty much good to go as far as our integral goes now. Nothing too tricky about these besides the setup and making sure you have them just rock solid and plugging the points in. If we do that integral, we're, we're so far along right now, I mean, I don't even have to ask you for it, I know you can do it. You're going to get negative y to the fourth over four. You're going to get six y cubed over three, which eventually we're going to simplify that down to two y cubed, and you're going to be going from zero to six. So that's our two pi. If we plug those numbers in, what you get, just make sure you don't do this. Okay, watch. This negative, that does not go with the exponent. You, you know the difference, right? Yes. If I had negative y in parentheses, yes. Negative y to the fourth, no. What this means is negative 6 to the fourth over 4. It means like this. It doesn't mean with that negative included. That would change your problem drastically, wouldn't it? But instead of a positive, you get an, or instead of a negative, you get a positive if you did it incorrectly. Plus, I'm going to change that to a 2. 